Muse for you, awesome websites without code. Hey, what's up, Musers? John with Muse for You, here to help you build awesome websites without code. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about gradients. I myself love gradients, I love using them, and I think they look really nice on websites. So if you're not familiar with gradients, basically it's just taking two or more colors and blending them together to create this mixed color effect. Uh, there are a few websites that I think use gradients really well, one of them being stripe.com. So if you notice here in the header, they start with a darker blue on the left, then go to a lighter blue, and then even to a green here on the right. So gradients look really nice. They add a bit more styling to the design and I really like them. So if you're familiar with working in Photoshop and Illustrator, um, working with gradients in those programs, you'll know that the gradient support is great. Uh, you can set the angles and basically add as many colors as you'd like and adjust the color for the gradient. So if I go into Illustrator and I create a rectangle, we can see that it's just a solid color right now. But if I go to the gradient panel and I click on the gradient bar, we now have a gradient applied to the rectangle. I can remove colors. I can change the gradient location. I can set the angle and things like that. I can add another color just by clicking and I'll double click in here and you can change the color to anything for the gradient, preferably something that looks nice and you know not too many colors with contrast otherwise you get a really weird looking gradient you'd want to kind of make sure the gradients have similar uh, values so that you're not looking at a really contrasty type of gradient so uh, yeah illustrator and photoshop great gradient support adobe muse a bit of a different story um, here i'll create a new site and i'll just draw a rectangle in Adobe Muse. So if I click and I draw a rectangle and I go to the fill option right up here in the upper control bar, we see we have the option between solid and gradient. And if I select gradient, we can choose between two colors and we can set the focal point. You can set it to horizontal or vertical and you can set the size to automatic or fixed. So there we have a simple gradient applied to the rectangle. So I myself, um, I like working with gradients and if you're familiar with working with gradients in Photoshop or Illustrator, um, you'll probably be missing some of those more advanced functions like setting the angle um, and things like that. Most gradients are not just horizontal or vertical. Um, you can even set radial gradients, which is starting with a circle and blending the circle within uh, another color. So you can have, you know, really play with the gradient and, and have more complex gradients. So I've taken it upon myself to kind of extend the functionality of gradients in Adobe Muse. And one way to do that is to use uh, CSS generators online. And CSS generators, they output CSS code, which is styling code in web design and web development. And then with the graphic styler widget or the advanced gradients widget, you can paste that code into the widget and apply a more complex gradient to your Adobe Muse website. So I'll be sharing with you the most recent gradient generator that I've come across, and I'll share a few other gradient generators as well that I think you'll find useful. So the most recent gradient generator that I've come across is called Grabient.com. Uh, not gradient, but grab, like grabbing something. So Grabient.com, and here they have many preset gradients to choose from. So if I scroll down, you know, they have three pages here of gradients. So let's say I like this preset here, this gradient preset. So what's really great about this website is that you can set the angle here. So we see it says 43 degrees. I can change the angle with this wheel here and, you know, just change the angle of the gradient to my liking. And you can choose uh, up to six colors. So if I click on this plus symbol, I can add more colors. And if I click on the swatch here, I can change the color and things like that. I can remove colors by click holding and dragging over the plus and it turns into a uh, trash can and then I can remove the colors there. 
I can also work with the location of the gradients by clicking on the slider icon and just dragging and moving the sliders here. So as we notice, it's really similar to the Adobe Illustrator gradient uh, function that I just went over. As we have the sliders, we can add colors and we can change the angle as well. So this is one way to add more complex gradients into Adobe Muse. So let's say I'm happy with this gradient. Let me actually just work with the angle. Or better yet, I'll just reset it here. It has a nice reset button. So if you like the original gradient, you can just reset it. And I'll, I'll just change the angle for fun here. So we'll say 120. And after you have the gradient or you know, you've know you set the gradient, you like it, you can just click on this copy CSS in the upper left hand corner of the preset. So if I click copy CSS, it tells me that it's copied and perfect. So now I have that CSS code copied. And don't worry if you don't know what CSS is, it's just styling code that's used in web design and development. You might wanna know what it is if you're building websites. Um, it's always good to have a background of, the th of these things, even though Adobe Muse is a totally code-free environment. Um, it's kind of useful to know these things as you can probably do a little bit more if you know some of the coding terminology. And even if you know a little code, it's always helpful to understand some of the backend stuff and things like that. But it's my job to help you build websites without code and that's why I'm doing this video. So let's go back into Muse. Now that we have that CSS code copied and I'm going to go ahead and delete this rectangle here and I'll actually just create another rectangle. I'll fill the rectangle with white and then we're going to use the graphic styler widget and let me actually fill it with something else so we can see it here in the video. So here we have this blue rectangle and now I want to apply that gradient from gradient.com gradient and apply it to this rectangle. So here I'm gonna to go to the graphic styles panel with the rectangle selected, go to graphic styles, and then we have this icon here. I like to say it looks like a piece of paper because this kind of has a folded corner, uh, corner. And then I'll double click on style, so I'll double click. And here in the graphic styles dialog box, I'll call this style one, okay? And it'll make more sense in a second. I probably should have brought in the widget first, but basically we're gonna add the graphic styler widget. So I'll go to the library panel. If you don't see this library panel, go to window and then library. So right up here, go to window and then click on library. All right, so here I'm gonna type in graphic styler and I'm gonna bring in the graphic styler widget, um, not the on scroller on click. I just want it to apply this, uh, this gradient to the element uh, right away. So I'll bring in the graphic styler widget and the reason we called this, we applied the graphic style style one to the rectangle is because if we notice here within the widget, it says style one. So that style, that graphic style has been applied to the rectangle. So any code that we add within this widget will be applied to this rectangle here. So here I'm gonna type in, I'm gonna hit command V to paste because remember from gradient.com, we copied the CSS code. So I'll just hit command V to paste. And then we have all this code here. Um, you don't really need to know all this code. It's, it's just basically CSS. Um, and that's what's gonna change the color of this rectangle to that gradient. And after it's pasted, just hit, hit uh, enter on the keyboard. And just like that, we'll preview. And we see that rectangle has the gradient applied to it from gradient.com. So it's just that simple. It's just a really nice way to add a more complex gradient to your website. So I can do something like this. Uh, I can say stretch to browser width so that the element stretches across the entire website and have a nice gradient header for my website. All right, looks good. So I'll go over one last uh, gradient generator, which is a uh, gradient animator. And this is a lot of fun because you can have the gradient move within the rectangle. So here I'm just gonna select a few colors. So we'll do this color and we'll add another color, something like that. We'll set the speed. You can set the gradient angle and the scroll angle. And then I'll click preview. And we can see that it changes from that green color to that blue color. So it's a moving gradient. So after you have the gradient set, and I'll add one more color just to 
kind of work with it a bit and we'll preview so we have three colors there and we can see the gradient moving so here we're going to copy the css code and we'll just paste into here in the graphic style code and then there's also a keyframe code which uh, that controls the movement of that gradient so it's more like an animation um, you know if you've worked with flash or uh, edge animate or after effects um, you'll know about keyframes and things like that so when you're working with motion we're using keyframes so that's the code here um, it'll have keyframes at keyframes here so we'll copy that right below the CSS code. And then in the graphic styler widget, we have the graphic style keyframes. So we'll just paste that in there for the keyframe section. And then I'll preview. And just like that, we have this animated gradient applied to the website. Looks good. All right, so that's it for the gradients. There's one last thing I'll go over, um, the advanced gradients widget. So I've created this widget so that you can easily add more advanced gradients to your website. So you can add more of an angle to the gradient and things like that. So with the advanced gradients, we have advanced gradients, we have graphic style, two colors, two colors graphic style. You can add a, a border with a gradient. You can add a gradient to the entire page. Uh, you can set for two colors or, or graphic style. So for example, if I select advanced gradients, full screen, two colors, and let me just hide this rectangle and I preview, we now have a gradient applied to the entire page. So that was really simple. That's just using the advanced gradients widget and you can set the angle, the color. And if you're not sure about the angle, you can use a program like Photoshop or even Gradient to take a look at, you know, what's the right angle for your uh, gradient. Then you just enter the value here. You can select the colors, location and opacity. And you can set scrolling so if you select scrolling, the gradient will stretch with the entire height of the website. If scrolling is not checked, then it'll just fit within the browser. So the gradient will stay fixed within the browser. So you can play with that and see how it looks on your website. Okay, so that's the advanced gradients. And if I select advanced gradient two colors, um, the gradient is right within the widget. So you can just resize the rectangle here, the widget uh, container and automatically see how the gradient will look. You can also apply it like we just did with the graphic style, the graphic styler, um, just enter the graphic style name, apply the graphic style name to the element and enter the code within the widget. And there's a box shadow generator as well uh, for uh, this element or for this widget. So you can add a, a more advanced shadow as well, or you could add shadows that are built into Adobe Muse um, right here in effects. You can click on shadow and add a shadow that way. So there's a lot of options here. If, uh, if you wanted to add gradients, it's, um, it's really simple. Um, and I just wanted to extend the functionality of gradients in Adobe Muse. Hopefully they add an update in a future release where there's a bit more advanced gradients going on. Uh, I myself would like that. But in the meantime, if you did want to add more complex gradients, there are plenty of generators and using these widgets, the graphic style widget and advanced gradients widget, you can easily add those gradients to your website. Uh, so that's it for gradients. Um, I'm very happy to share this with you. I myself like using gradients a lot. So I'll leave a link to the other gradient generators in the description area below. And you can access the graphic style widget and the advanced gradients widget at museforyoushop.com. So if Yep, so here I'll go to museforyoushop.com. I'll click on the pop-up, join today. And here you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. The graphic styler widget is right here. Uh, here you can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Each of the widgets have features included. Um, there's a few animated animating and styling generators right on the widget page. There are the widget options, another tutorial on how to use the graphic styler and the community section here as well if you had any questions about the widget. So there's the graphic styler and the advanced gradients is here as well. All right, so those are the, uh, the graphic styler and advanced gradients widget. Um, just as a precursor, I'm really excited to create a video on the scroll show widget. Um, you know, one thing that I've been 
kind of looking into a lot is uh, progressive enhancement and graceful degradation. If you've heard of those terms, that's really great uh, because I think as web designers and developers, even though we're not working directly with code, we should still know some of these terms. And basically, graceful degradation is starting at your largest breakpoint and going to the lower breakpoint. So you're removing elements as you're going lower within uh, with in the website and designing for smaller devices. And progressive enhancement, which is also called mobile first, is starting with your smallest breakpoint, making sure that it looks really good for mobile devices, and then enhancing the site as the breakpoints get larger. So there's not a right or wrong way. A lot of designers think that mobile first is the best way uh, because more and more people are using mobile devices. I think it surpassed uh, desktop computers and in internet searches and internet browsing. Um, so a lot of users are using their mobile device and uh, keeping mobile first in mind will just allow for a really great experience on mobile. And then as the website gets larger, just enhancing the website uh, for larger devices. Um, I do like this approach because um, I think many are using widgets, not in the best way. So designing for mobile without any widgets, without any like, you know, animations and things like that, just a really solid user experience. I think that's great. And then for, you know, as you get larger for maybe tablet, but definitely desktop devices, you can enhance the, the experience by adding widgets, adding animations and things like that. So I think progressive enhancement or mo the mobile first approach is a great approach, but you know, there's not a right or wrong way when you're working with design. Obviously there's many other factors to include. Um, one thing I like to say is you know, if you have a good designer, uh, just design for different with devices. And that way, if you start at desktop, it's okay. Or if you start at mobile, it's okay. So kind of looking at the entire design, the entire experience you want to give the user, even before you touch uh, Muse or developing the site. So that's just my two cents. I'll be talking more about that. That might be in the next video. Um, the next video might be scroll show. But I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on that. Um, I do want to open this up, kind of a little discussion, because even though we're not using code, we still have a responsibility as web developers and designers to provide the best experience for our users and so that people enjoy visiting the website. Uh, so that's it for this tutorial on gradients. A little bit longer than I thought as I started talking about, you know, the mobile first approach, progressive enhancement, graceful degradation. Uh, but I'll talk a bit more about that in another video tutorial, and I'll leave links to some of the articles that I think are really useful if you're just getting into web design, or if you want a bit more clarity with uh, breakpoints, web development, and yeah, web design and web development in general. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. If you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to musefreeshop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you. Muse for you, awesome websites without code.